you know, I saw a tweet today. Uh, it was actually posted on Hoops Hype yesterday. But I saw a tweet from Adam Zagoria, who quoted LeBron James as telling ESPN that his goal is to be, quote, the best player of all time, the greatest of all time, and I'm going to put that pressure on myself. Um, so this is my question to uh, my subscribers and anyone watching this video who may not be subscribed to me, but I hope you would subscribe to me. Um, do you think that he has a realistic shot at surpassing Michael Jordan's achievements, legacy, and whatnot? Do you think that he has the, um, time uh, do you think he can accomplish enough to surpass Michael Jordan um, me personally I think he can get close but I'm not sure if he can surpass him you know I'll give you the reasons why um, people forget as, as dominant as LeBron James has been, don't get me wrong, this guy has been flat out the most dominant player I've seen since Michael Jordan. Um, like I said, the four MVP awards by age 28, and let's not forget how he came to the league at age 18, but still. Um, uh, four most valuable player award winners, uh, award winner uh, player, um, an NBA championship, but he looks headed. He looks like he's headed towards the second one. Um, five seasons in a row now, he's led the NBA in win and win shares. Um, he's third all time in win shares per forty eight minutes, and uh, that is an important stat. You know, some people say that's a meaningless stat. It's not, because if I'm not mistaken, the all time leader in lost shares is Antoine Walker, and we know how terrible player he could be at times when it came to shooting his team into losses um, so that's, that does have some um, merit and it's not always you know some people say it's an offensive stat so it's biased but I recall Dennis Rodman uh, I think 91-92 season either he led the NBA in win shares or he was close amongst the leaders I believe it was most of the leaders, and we know that he doesn't score that much. It showed just how intrigual a part of uh, that Detroit Pistons team that year that he was and the games that he did win. So that stat, I think it's a very uh, legitimate statistic. But anyway, um, as brilliant and as dominant LeBron James was, has been, um, people forget how dominant Michael Jordan was. Um, his rookie year, I wish I could go through it uh, game by game, month by month, but he got better and better and better and better. He started off, see, when Michael Jordan was drafted in 1984, this is forgotten throughout history. Um... The cream of the crop of that draft was projected to be a King Olajuwon. Michael Jordan was projected to be a Jerry Stackhouse type player. Uh, he'll give you mm, 20 points per game, uh, maybe adequate defense at times, uh, but he wasn't expected to be the player that he became. And that's a fact. He was not expected to be what he became. Um, but he just improved by leaps and bounds. Uh, I believe at one point this season, he was averaging like, uh, I think by February of 1985, he was averaging 24 points per game. And then he just went on a tear the rest of that year. I think he had a, his, his uh, season high that year, if I remember, was uh, 45 points against the Spurs. And uh, I think it came later on, I think it was in March of 85. And then that's when he finished the season, averaging 28.2 points per game, shooting 52%. Uh, I think he gave, I think he was giving him six rebounds and five assists. Uh, he was, uh, he had a phenomenal season. 
Um, but the thing that separates Michael Jordan from most other players is when I think of Michael Jordan and his signature moments, I usually think of playoffs when it counted. I think of finals performances. And as brilliant as LeBron James and as great as Kobe Bryant and many of these other guys have been, I typically don't think of a lot of uh, playoff performances. Now, I do think that when I think of uh, Shaq, and I do think of that when I think of Tim Duncan. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, although they haven't been as numerous as Jordan's. That's the thing that separates, to me, LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan. When LeBron starts putting up these signature career performances in the playoffs on a consistent basis, then I will consider putting him in Jordan's realm, his atmosphere, which is top five status. Um, until that, Kobe will never touch my top five. Um, I feel for him for the, the, the uh, injury that he had. Um, if his career is going to be over, um, I have him as a top, close to a top 10 player. Not quite. Um, but LeBron has a chance to be a top 10 player. But anyway, I defer from what I was talking about a little earlier. Um, you know, by 1987, when Jordan was just going on a tear, now, this is just three years into his career. Already, people were talking about Jordan might be the best player we've ever seen. He was already getting uh, that those type of accolades. Larry Bird was giving him those type of accolades. Um, you know, he was he had already done that by three years. By the time he won his first championship, the few people who were his detractors saying, "Well, he hadn't won a championship." Pretty much by then, they were still they were. Pretty much the majority of pain was this guy was the best player I've ever seen. It was pretty much very little debate. Uh, and by the time he retired the first time, it was almost by acclamation that he was the best player we ever seen. With LeBron James, there's still a debate as to whether he's the best player in the league right now. Um, although I think, to me, it's head and shoulders, he's head and shoulders above everybody else. There's still some debate with that. Um, so, I may have kind of gone on a little tangent there, but to make a long story short, I think he can come close. I think LeBron James can win. Uh, I think I think he could possibly win another two, maybe in the right situation, three championships. Um, I think he can. I think he can exceed Jordan. And uh, MVP awards, um, but when it comes to legacy, when it comes to the things that he me he means to the game, the things that uh, we remember of these two guys, I don't know. I don't really know if he can do that. You know, some of his numbers may end up being a little bit superior to Mike's. But as far as achievements, I mean, if you look at numbers, if you were just to look at numbers, and I would, I would have put uh, Will Chamberlain ahead of Kareem, but it's more than that. Um, the thing that hurt hurts Will uh, legacy to me is is not only his free throw shooting, but Will doesn't have quite as many signature moments. Uh, in the postseason, as Kareem does, and that matters a lot, man. And that, that's what me to me just hurts uh, Kobe. You know, he just does not have many signature moments, man. And the few signature moments I can think of is always number thirty-four on the court with him in the games I can recall. Um, I can think of a lot of bad games Kobe's had where he got bailed out. So, anyway, that's just my opinion on that. I don't think. LeBron James can touch Michael Jordan as to become the greatest. Perhaps many of you guys disagree with that. I'd like to know what you think. All right, peace.